front runner spot. You have been joined now by uh, Shina Okele Okeliji uh, from Nigeria. Uh, Shina, this, this, everybody look at it and say, you know what, it will be a walk in the park for Nigeria uh, as far as the upfront qualifiers are concerned. But it has proven that most countries are improving every time. What do you make of the squad selected by the coach for the game that is coming up against Sierra Leone home and away? Well, uh, I don't think um, people are really worried about Nigeria. They actually topped the lot. Um, they struggled to beat Benin in, on the opening day, and then they went away um, to win. Um, so I think after two match days, they are looking good. Home and away win against um, Sierra Leone will uh, probably just seal qualification for them with a game to spare. So. That is the mentality of the Nigerian team. It's not like they are disrespecting Syria. They just feel like they are not a strong opposition. But when you look at the selection picked by Coach Kenneth Rowe, he's gone for his trusted, um, trusted as well as um, um, players he knows. So basically, he settled for a, a squad that has been part and parcel of the team in the last seven months. Talking about the squad that has been part of the puzzle of the team for the last seven months, Nigeria is known as a powerhouse on the continent. Every team that plays against Nigeria comes well prepared. They want to fight and be able to probably cause an upset on their own. Um, which are key players we can look at in the Nigerian squad for this match? And uh, are there any omission from the players that you really know that are always in the part of the squad? Well, Ahmed Musa is the captain, but he's, um, he's clubless at the moment. He left um, the, the Saudi club and many are talking about him going to Turkey. Um, a lot of people here are asking questions why he, he was invited and why he should be part of the team. His form in the last six, seven months hasn't really been great. Um, I mean, post-COVID, everyone has been talking about what he's up to. He's um, terminated his contract in Saudi Arabia. Is he supposed to be invited? But Coach Gennett Roy himself hasn't really started him in his last few matches. So it tells you that uh, maybe age is catching up with Musa. He's been around the team in almost a decade now. Um, but a lot of people still believe that he has something to offer. And that's probably why the coach would want to bring back his captain to give him the confidence that um, he's still part and, uh, of course, um, a bit of a contributor to his team. Um, I think for the Nigerian team, a lot of attention and focus should be on Vitor Sime. He hasn't really set Italian football at, um, alight. People expected so much from him. Africa's most expensive yeah. footballer when he moved from French club Lille to Napoli, but he hasn't really hit the ground running two goals um, for the club in Syria. And, you know, there are talks about, could it be a flop? But that is, the, that is the life of football. When you are a big money transfer and you don't hit the ground running, people start speculating, people start talking, you know, all of these things. So I think for now, um, Nigeria against Syria Leone, Coach, Coach Kenneth Ross should not have much to worry about. But then again, we are talking Syria Leone here, a team that has actually embarrassed Nigeria in the past. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about those players. You're talking about the players that the coach has called up to the squad here. I mean, you look at Kelechi from Leicester, you look at Alex Iwobi, uh, players that have done very well. But, you know, you want to see more of that coming out into the Super Eagle squad. Uh, don't you think probably a Musa will probably be able to, uh, as a, you know, some players don't need to play sometimes, just need to be part of the team to motivate the players to be able to perform very well. What do you make of a Kelechi and Alex Uwobi in the squad? Yes, they are doing well for their teams. And I understand the argument that is coming up about Ahmed Musa. But having seen Ahmed Musa probably being in camp with the Super Eagles, what does he bring that is different from all the other players? I think for Ahmed Musa, he brings space, he brings experience. And sometimes um, he's just a player now that you don't expect so much from. I mean, in the past, Ahmed could play games and, you know, many people are still reminiscing the game against Argentina. You know, um, just um, two, two summers ago at the World Cup, he scored two worldies against um, uh, a team that many actually thought um, was going to give Nigeria a problem at the World Cup. And Nigeria won that game at the World Cup. So you begin to ask, you know, Iceland, I was talk I'm referring to Iceland now. Um, yeah. All that look like uh, forgotten memories now. People are no longer looking back and, you know, having that um, brilliance of Ahmed Musa in their memory. Memories. All they want to see is a player who can actually deliver on a regular basis. I think the problem with Nigeria really is the fact that it's, it's difficult for the coach because you are not working with the players regularly and then you are bringing players from different teams. Kenneth Troy himself, I think, will shoot himself in the foot sometimes. He tends to bring players in this, this, win, this um, international window. The next window is bringing in two and three new players. You can't be you know, changing and bringing in and pulling players apart and all that. 
I think when you look at the Nigerian team, since the AFCON and EG, there's been a lot of change in the team. So for Ahmed Musa, he needs to earn his spot. For Kelechi Enacho, many people are saying maybe the coach should play him, you know, um, behind the striker because when you look at him at Leicester, he can only shine when he's playing behind the striker like Jamie Vardy. You can't play him up front and expect him to perform. That is his struggles. So I think he struggles at national team level and club level because everyone seems to struggle about what is his best position. I think with Pep Guardiola, he had a good time at, Leicester, at Manchester City. But since he moved to Leicester, he has struggled. He lacked confidence. He hasn't really worked out yeah. in the world of a lot of people. But I think um, this is a chance for him to actually prove himself. And for Nigeria, Syria Leone, um, when you look at um, their own squad as well, you have two players who are coming back from international retirement. They made a U-turn. They are part and parcel yeah. of the squad again now. They are facing Nigeria. Kai Kamara has called up his international retirement. He wants to be part of the B game in Nigeria. And of course, the, 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 the best fixture too is going to be an interesting one. So I think it's going to be an interesting one for Nigeria. Let's talk about Daniel Akpey. We all know in South Africa that he's uh, been leaking goals of recent when a match that we've seen mm -hmm. play for Kaza Chiefs. Uh, mm -hmm. But he's the only African base player in the Nigerian squad. And also in goals, we're talking about uh, Sebastian Osigwe, uh, who has been called up also and kept. Uh, is it all for him to get experience uh, sitting with the more senior uh, goalkeepers? Um, for Daniel Akpey, uh, whether you like it or not, he has a big challenge now in a player like. Maduka Okoye. Maduka Okoye is um, playing for Sparta Rotterdam now. Um, he, he played in the last game. Um, for Daniel Akoye, that is the, his big test now. He's no longer Francis Uzo, who's coming back from a long-time injury. Um, you have yeah. also a player like um, Ezinwa, who plays in the local scene, um, who was meant to be um, on a standby list, but he has joined the squad now because some players cannot travel from Europe to come down. So it's, 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 it's really a big challenge for Nigeria now. The goalkeeping, pro the goalkeeping problem that seems to be an issue um, in the last five years seems to be going away now. When you have options like um, Sebastian Osigwe and of course, Madhukwa Okoye, two European bond players who are, yeah. two European bond players who have gotten an opportunity to be a part of the Nigerian squad. The return is going to be very interesting to see now. Let's talk about William Proust Ekong uh, from Watford in, a, in the, the defense of the team. And also talking about the middle of a park where you see, uh, the, you see the likes of uh, uh, Aribo coming in as well as Onyeka in the middle of a park. Uh, how do you make of that? Because I know that um, if you look at William Proust Ekong, he plays more of a central, central, central position as far as the, uh, the, the Nigerians are concerned. Ayin also from Fulham coming to the squad. So you really have on paper a very, very solid squad and should be a walk in the park against Sierra Leone. It won't be a walk in the park for Nigeria. Um, William Fristegong has gone to championship side at um, Watford now. Um, he's, he's, he's a player that many expect so much from. The last international break wasn't good for him. I think he has to really ship up now. Um, of course, Leon Balogun is having a fantastic season with um, Glasgow yeah. Rangers in the Scottish um, League. And I think he's one player who brings a lot to the team. Um, I know, I don't understand what's going on with him and Genetro. He hasn't really earned the confidence of Genetro. Um, I yeah. know he's, he's, a, he's a player with versatile options for Nigeria. He can play centre-back, he can play right-back. He can also play in the central midfield. But Coach Genetro hasn't really been uh, a big fan of the player. He scored a brilliant goal for Fulham, and which will actually continue to boost his confidence. Um, then when you're talking about the midfield, um, it's shocking that... One of the midfielders in the Nigerian team had to pull out and then the coach had to go and bring in um, a defender to replace him. You know, it's, it's, it's a bit of um, uh, my conundrum with um, Genetro. You don't understand where his mind is. So for the Nigerian yeah. team, in my opinion, I think Joe Aribo is one player who, um, before, before his injury, was on his way up. You know, he played against um, Brazil in the friendly and um, of course, another friendly against Ukraine. He's in the shape of his life. He's with Glasgow Rangers. He's, back, he's bounced back looking good. So I think he, having a player like Joe Aribo in the team can actually push the Nigerian team forward. Um, for Genetro, like I said, um, he's going to come under immense pressure. Um, people are going to be watching these games closely. He hasn't convinced them that he deserved another contract after playing in the last two friendly games. So I think the game against Serie Leone, a very dangerous and unpredictable side will actually give the public as well as the um, critical Nigerian media an opportunity to decide if Genetro will probably going to get a leeway into his next two years or he's probably going to be on the wires throughout. 
Let's talk about, I mean, you, you already really touched on him a bit, talking about uh, Joe Aribo. I mean, I know that he missed the game against Algeria and Tunisia. Um, the importance of bringing him back into the squad, especially given the fact that you had an injury to a midfielder who eventually was replaced by a defender. How crucial will be his combination in the middle of a park to try and set Nigeria going forward? And, and exactly, I mean, the reasons behind him not being part of the previous teams against Algeria and Tunisia as well, We'll probably have a lot of people saying, you know what, we want to see what he can bring now that he's coming back into the team. He brings a lot to the team. He's, he's got pace, he's skillful, um, he moves the team forward. Um, he's a player who hasn't even played up to five international matches yet. Everyone is talking about and raving about him. Um, I think it's important to have him in the squad. You don't have a player like um, Wilfred Ndidi who has an injury, who's out with an injury, you know, he's undergone yeah. surgery. And in the absence of um, a player like that, you need the energy. Of Ogene Karu a table. A table missed the last international window as well. Um, he, he put out of that game as well. And so when you have a player like Joe Aribo, many people expected um, Coach Kenneth Roth to have actually packed the midfield with more opportunities for younger players and older players in Nigerian sport. But he hasn't really taken that opportunity. He's only named maybe four or five players in the midfield. So Joe Aribo, a table, um, you know, with that combination, you you hope that um, Nigeria will be able to control the midfield play against Syria Leone. But I think um, it's difficult to understand the mind of Genetro. But I think in, in, yeah. in his squad, he has a team that can actually, that should um, be able to deliver. If, if, like I said, he struggled against Benin in the opening, uh, opening day of this qualifying. And if um, Syria Leone can watch that tape again, they might have um, a bit of opportunity to break the Nigerian team because against Benin, they were on the second foot. They just couldn't really um, come into that game until uh, they fought back to win 2-1. I think if um, Syria Lu can pretend the same um, problems that um, Benin give them, I think it will be a frustrating one for Genetro and his boys. Talking about the Benin game, I mean, a lot of us were surprised to see how Benin held Nigeria for a very long time and how Nigeria came back and fought. But it also talks about the reserve for Nigeria because sometimes in order to perform very well, you need players that can grind results. And I believe that a squad that you have can be able to do that. Do you concur? Well, uh, this is post-COVID. This is, I mean, this is the COVID era now. The pandemic has changed a lot of things for football. You no longer have the home fans on your back who are actually going to um, create the, the, the 12th man ambience for you. Teams are no longer scared of Nigerians. Um, players are no longer scared of Nigerians. They see that they... Um, against Benin, they actually can be hurt. And South Africa taught a lot of African teams a lesson that you can go to Nigeria and win against Nigeria. Remember how yeah. South Africa used to come to Uyu back then, and um, they, they, just, they just embarrassed Nigeria twice, you know, preventing them from going to one Afcon and also beating them um, you know, comfortably at, at home. So yeah. it's not like Nigerians are, you know, um, that team with killer instincts of the team of the past of the 90s and early 2000s. Nowadays, the Nigerian team, I think, um, when, when you push them real hard because of the lack of experience in the squad right now, I think it, it, it shows, you know, most of these young players haven't really struggled. They haven't really played against strong opposition to really understand what it takes. Against Algeria, you saw them at the AFCON. Um, they still have one or two players with experience. But then again, the Algerian team with a tactical manager like uh, Jamel, Belmadi, they really punished Nigeria seriously. So I think in a, in, in a matter of uh, games like this, Nigeria are no longer invisible. Teams are no longer scared of Nigeria. I think that's the extra push that some teams need. And then, like I said, it's the pandemic period where teams can actually come to Nigeria and walk away with three points if you're not careful. Or even Nigeria chasing and looking for that one point to just say, glory be to God, let's go home. But I mean, let's, let's talk about this. I mean, we will wrap it up in a bit, but I want to find out something. Nigeria has over 160 million fans, strong fans at any given game. Surely being a coach for a Nigerian team has to be the most difficult job in the, in the continent because look at the number of players. I was, I was looking at a squad that played in the World Cup in 2018. I mean, H.E.A. Jele, those are some of the key players in the squad. You're talking about Victor Moses. You're talking about some of the other players on Nwanko. You know, so these are some of the players that really were part of the squad. And those players are nowhere to be seen now. You have seen a new generation coming to the fore. And these players come in there under pressure to outdo and outperform the previous mm -hmm. generation. Surely it is a difficult job to be part of a Nigerian, uh, Nigerian team, whether being a coach or just being a player. Um, so 
what would be the expectation from Nigeria? For example, let's say Nigeria does not get all six points in the match against Sierra Leone. Mm. What will be the reaction and what will be the first thing that fans are going to say in Nigeria? We are talking about a country of over 200 million people. Nigerians are, Nigerians have this overbloated ego of who they really are. When you look at Nigeria, you probably think they've won the AFCON like 10 times. They've only had three, <laughs> three successes in the African Cup of Nations. Um, the fans are yeah. unbelievably demanding um, because they believe in the numbers of the, you know, the population. And of course, Nigeria, you know, trying to um, continue to say they are the giant of Africa. They believe they are the giant of Africa. For the team, yeah. um, every, every man in Nigeria and his dog knows who should play and who shouldn't play. Everyone tends to think this is how the Super Eagles should shape up and they should just run over any team. The Nigerian national team is the only country that will go to the World Cup and their fans expected them to even win the World Cup. They haven't even been to the quarterfinals. So that is how demanding the fans are. So it's unthinkable and, you know, unbelievable should Nigeria lose six points against City alone. It's absolutely unthinkable. The only um, victory City alone had over Nigeria in a major um, qualifier it came in 2001, I think. The only game that um, won Peter Saidi, that was the goalkeeper. Um, I'm sure you know him now on, um, yes. on Continental TV. South Africa, yes. Peter Sa yeah. Peter Saidi, that, uh, you know, he resides in South Africa now. It's a forgettable game because it was meant to be a back pass at Nigeria considered. And their destiny was practically in their own hands when they were playing in that qualifier because they went to Freetown and they lost um, thanks to... Um, the magnificent goalkeeper Peter Saidi that was unforgettable. So Nigerians don't yeah. want a repeat of that. Nigerians don't want a repeat of such um, performance. But anything is possible in football, like I said. Um, if a team can come in, like I said, if they have an access to the, if they get access to see the winning game, they can see that this Nigerian team under Genetro can easily, easily be beaten, and nothing is impossible. You may have all the big players, Alex Iwobi, you mentioned earlier, coming from Everton, Kelechi Enacho from Leicester City. These players are boosted by the confidence that if they beat Nigeria, they know they are going to make headlines. So what a good way to do it. Why not beat Nigeria at home and then take care of them when they travel back um, to your own base? So it's going to be a tricky game for Nigeria. Fans are not thinking of lo Nigeria losing this game. There's been a lot happening in the country. There's been the police brutality uh, protest. So fans yeah. have actually turned their attention to social issues in Nigeria and not really focusing on football right now. But then again, is the Super Eagles. When the Super Eagles play, Nigeria tend to come together and, um, you know, just cheer the team because there are millions of people whose sole, um, you know, happiness and joy comes from football. And like they say in Africa, football is the opium of the people. So what a better way for the Super Eagles to actually calm some nerves and remind um, the, the fans and the people that football is still going on in Africa, you know? Right. But uh, <laughs> Washino, the Keji, uh, okay, Leji, rather, I know that we can talk the whole day about football. Let's get a prediction. Give a score. Let, let's, just, let's just talk about the numbers. Um, Nigeria at home, Nigeria away. What sort of numbers can you look at? I'm horrible at predictions. So I'm going to go Nigeria 2, Sierra Leone 0 <laughs> in the first leg. And then right. maybe a 1 1 draw for the return leg. Maybe a 1 1. A 1 1. Um, Result for the return fixture, I think. So you believe that a, a four point are, are there up, up for grabs, not a six, not a full six? Well, six is a bit um, asking too much. Um, like I said, um, Sierra Leone, I believe they, they have a very strong score. Some of them play abroad. Um, they have 16 players coming from abroad. So that tells you the kind of quality that they possess. Um, Nigeria is still a team, in, a, a, a team in transit, you know. Um, you are not even sure who's going to be in goal. Maybe Madhuka Okoye, you are not sure what's going to happen. Genetro's um, selection and it's the way it sets its team up is always one that gives fans what they call high blood pressure in Nigeria. So I think um, <laughs> it, it's, 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 it's only fair to say four points is what you expected of the Super Eagles. If they manage to get six points, then, you know, miracles do happen. Very impossible to please 200 fans, 200 million fans in one country. So, uh, that's Sheena Okeleji. Thank you very much, my friend, uh, multimedia sport journalist uh, based in Nigeria. So, he believes that the Super Eagles will get four points out of that game. We'll watch and see whether they win 2 0 at home or 1 1 in the second, in the return leg of that encounter. My friend, thank you very much for joining us today on uh, Front Runner Sport. Until we meet again, hopefully, we'll be talking to you after the matches to see if your predictions were actually or, or correct or not. <laughs> I won't bet on that. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you very much, my guy. Thanks for having me.